Jennifer Granholm, the former uh, governor of Michigan, was uh, confirmed as the 16th Energy Secretary of the United States today. She's also a Canadian. And we're going to talk to Ramanan Krishnamurti, who is the Chief Energy Officer for the University of Houston, about what that means for clean energy and for uh, uh, American energy and climate policy. So welcome to the interview, Ramanan. Thank you so much, Mark, for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, look, let's just start with your general response, your reaction to Granholm's uh, confirmation. Um, I, I think this, I see this as an opportunity. I see this as a tremendous opportunity for the United States to continue its uh, global leadership in energy and really lead the transformation to the clean energy paradigm that we're looking for. Um, I think um, the, the, the optionalities that come to come to the table, the ability to make these commercial realities and to really accelerate our efforts to lead uh, the, the conversation on climate change uh, and, and, the, and the issue of really getting to affordable, reliable and sustainable energy is going to be so uh, so important for us and for future generations. I, and I could, I, I, I got to tell you that you know, I'm so excited that this is happening. It couldn't happen faster, in my opinion, uh, than this. And I think this is um, from a commercial opportunity standpoint. This is really where I see uh, us really growing. Now. In uh, President Biden's uh, campaign climate plan, he talked about how uh, under the Trump administration, the United States had fallen behind China in sort of the arms race around clean energy and clean tech. And when reading the government, uh, sorry, the Department of Energy press release and uh, Secretary Granholm's uh, blog post that came out today, boy, was there ever a strong emphasis on, on using the department's energy resources, their scientists, their laboratories, and pouring a lot of money into developing these new technologies and making them commercial. Right, and, and I think this, is, this has been something that has been ongoing, uh, even through the Trump administration, the national labs at the, uh, in the Department of Energy's national labs have been pushing forward with this clean energy trans transition. The industry uh, in the United States has been preparing itself for the clean energy transition. And I think they're all ready. Uh, I think the, 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 the central focus has become that we must address a portfolio of energy solutions. We must look at a way to get to be sustainable, but two important tenets that go with it. One, that energy must continue to be affordable. And second, as, as became clear over the last 10 days in Texas, you know, it also has to be reliable uh, because Ultimately, it is a commodity that is so important to our way of life that uh, compromising reliability is not an option. Uh, it, and the, re the reality is this is not just about science, technology, engineering. It is also about having the right sets of policies, right sets of incentives, and the right regulatory structure to, to really act upon and deliver on this portfolio of energy solutions, but also this idea that we must be extremely good caretakers of providing society with sustainable, reliable, and affordable energy. Now, the fact that uh, Secretary Granholm was a, a two-term governor in Michigan and, and during that time an advocate for clean energy, do you think that gives her uh, an advantage in working with exist, you know, uh, other governors now on that regulatory framework, because that's something that comes through loud and clear in the literature is how much that policy and, and regulatory, the right regulatory regimes really make such a huge difference to the energy transition. So do you think that that gives her a leg up? You know, just going back to where Michigan is, right? Michigan is a very large industrial state. They know how to work with industry and she put front and center industry focus. How do I get, for instance, the automobile industry to be clean, but also profitable, right? And the same thing I hope she can do for the energy industry. How do you keep it sustainable? How do you clean it up and yet keep it affordable and reliable? And she knows how to work with industry, I think. 
Now, final question, Ramana. Uh, what kind of implications does this have for the oil and gas industry? Because the uh, you know you're in Texas, and Texas is uh, on the one hand been a big supporter of, of has more wind power than any other state, uh, but at the same time, it has a political culture that is not always uh, you know supportive of the, the energy transition. How do you think that's going to play out? I, I think the political structure is ready. But more importantly, the industrial structure, structure is ready. They are ready for the energy transition. They have started to focus on the issue of emissions. How do we reduce emissions has become the central focus of everything we talk about in the energy world. Now, how do you, now a lot of the challenges, and this has been happening for the last 30 years, there's been, an, there's been a focus on emissions, but none of it has been commercially realizable. Texas and Houston, by extension, is going to be the first place where you're going to see this happen commercially and profitably. And I think that is going to be where the calling card of the state and the country and the region is going to get defined. And we hope that with the strong encouragement of somebody like Jennifer Granholm and President Biden, this will happen sooner rather than later so that Houston, Texas, the United States and North America can continue to lead the global structure. Uh, another final question for you, Ramadan. Uh, I'm fond of saying that in, if energy transitions are 50 plus years and long and the first 20 are generally when the new technologies get into the market and get established, get up on the S curve uh, to the point where it's the third decade that is really the disruptive explosive growth. We're now in the third decade of this energy transition. Do you see this, the 2020s, as being the disruptive decade where these technologies really convert, you know, they, they really begin to accelerate up that S curve and you see them more and more, you know, displacing fossil fuel technology in the, in the marketplace? I think they converge, they accelerate based on the infrastructure. And I think most importantly, they integrate with the, with the fossil or any other energy systems that we can think of. I don't think that this is a, is a binary issue. I think it is an issue where it is done in collaboration and is done through an integration of systems. As I mentioned, this energy transition, like all other energy transitions, is going to be a portfolio approach. And so the sooner we accept that this is not a binary conversation and this must happen with everybody working together, I think the sooner we're gonna realize that we all can come out better and humanity will come out better. Ramana, thank you. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks so much, Markham. Appreciate it. And look forward to chatting with you soon.